गाइस वेलकम बैक टू दिस वंडरफुल सीरीज फंटास्टिक कॉन्सेप्ट्स एंड वेयर टू यूज देम दिस इज भावेश कृपलानी एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक स्वीट स्पॉट नाउ दिस कॉन्सेप्ट होल्ड्स अ लॉट ऑफ इंपॉर्टेंस इन मेनी स्पोर्ट्स लाइक यू टेक क्रिकेट बैडमिंटन टेनिस बेसबॉल एंड मेनी अदर सच स्पोर्ट्स वेयर यू टू होल्ड अ बैट इन योर हैंड एंड हिट सम ऑब्जेक्ट करेक्ट सो दिस कॉन्सेप्ट मेनी ऑफ यू ऑलरेडी नो दैट ओके कॉन्शियसली और सबकॉन्शियसली यू मैट नॉट बी नोइंग द टेक्निकल टर्म बट स्टिल यू नो दैट दर इज अ पॉइंट ऑन द बैट फ्रॉम वेयर इफ यू हिट द बॉल यू कैन हिट विथ मैक्सिमम पॉसिबल एफर्ट फॉर अ सिक्स राइट सो दिस स्वीट स्पॉट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज द पॉइंट ऑफ प्रकशन एंड लेट्स डिस्कस इट फर्दर so the sweet spot can be understood using one single formula and let me tell you this formula is very easy to derive and to remember okay i have derived this formula myself and i don't know why for some reason this formula is absent in all of the standard books that we study but this formula will help you in solving several different concepts that could be otherwise very lengthy to solve and that single formula is helpful to you in so many ways if you know the sweet spot of your cricket bat you know how to hit a six if you know the sweet spot of your tennis racket you know how to hit smashes if you know the sweet spot you can find the direction of friction on a rolling body If you know the sweet spot you can use it to find the instantaneous axis of rotation you can also use sweet spot in simple harmonic motion for a very important concept that you will learn later so let's continue and understand this sweet spot so let's first understand what is a sweet spot so here you can see we have a rod which is hinged from the top right it can oscillate freely about that hinge here i have marked the point on the rod where if i apply a force there will be no force experienced by the hinge okay if i'm hitting at this point there will be no force on the hinge so this point over here is called as the sweet spot so let's now analyze this first first of all i need to mark the point of center of mass so let's say on the rod uh, this point over here is my center of mass okay and the length over here is let's say x1 and the distance of sweet spot from center of mass is x2 distance between hinge and center of mass is x1 distance between center of mass and sweet spot is x2 and now let's apply a force as required so when i apply a force at the sweet spot no force will be experienced by the hinge okay but since the rod is still hanging about that point it will start rotating so let us say that the rod experiences a uh, angular acceleration alpha okay the rod experiences angular acceleration alpha due to this force then what we can do so we can write on a torque torque will be f times force multiplied by total distance how much x1 plus x2 okay x1 plus x2 right and now angular angular acceleration alpha will be how much so that should be equal to i about hinge multiplied by alpha correct now what is the value of moment of inertia of the hinge so i can write down moment of inertia of the hinge about the hinge to be equal to moment of inertia about center of mass plus mass into x1 square i am applying parallel axis theorem moment of inertia about center of mass plus mx1 square will give you moment of inertia about hinge so plus mx1 square okay now if you are aware about the concept of radius of gyration so i can write this icom to be equal to m times kc square plus mx1 square icom is m times kc square where kc is the radius of gyration about center of mass okay then i can find alpha from the two equations so alpha will be equal to how much f times x1 plus x2 divided by m times kc square plus x1 square now center of mass is performing circular motion okay with a circle of radius x1 okay so center of mass will have how much acceleration acceleration of center of mass will be radius multiplied by alpha so that is x1 times alpha now 
let's look at only the motion of center of mass so in uh, physics there's a concept called uh, that if uh, uh, on a body what is the total external force if the total external force is let's say f external then it should be equal to total mass of the body multiplied by acceleration of center of mass now like i told you when you are applying the force at the sweet spot the hinge will apply no force on the rod or any hanging object so that means on my object there is only one force right now which is f hinge is applying no force at the moment so i can say that my external force is only equal to f that is equal to m times what is ac ac is equal to x1 times alpha so f is equal to what m times x1 times what is alpha alpha is f into x1 plus x2 by m times kc square plus x1 square so f into x1 plus x2 by m times kc square plus x1 square now simplify this formula and you will get x1 x2 is equal to kc square so this is your formula x1 into x2 equal to kc square where x1 is the distance of center of mass from the hinge okay x2 is the distance of sweet spot from the center of mass and kc is what it is the radius of gyration about the center of mass for the body so this formula will help you solve any problem related to sweet spot whatever be the shape of the body if you know x1 if you know kc you can find the location of sweet spot that is x2 distance from the center of mass simple so now let's take the example of this rod over here okay so in case of rod kc is equal to in case of rod kc is equal to l by root of 12 okay or kc square is equal to l square by 12 all right so x1 is how much now what is the value of x1 over here okay so the center of mass for a rod lies exactly at the center so x1 will be equal to l by 2 okay so i can write down x1 is equal to l by 2 so when you solve them you will get x2 to be equal to l by 6 now comes the important question what if i don't apply my force on the sweet spot what would happen if i shift the force closer to the hinge or away from the hinge let's understand the rule is very simple okay if you are applying the force closer to the hinge then hinge will apply force opposite to the applied force that is if you are applying force towards left then the hinge will apply force towards right and if you shift away from the hinge for example in this case okay your hinge is over here but you are away from the hinge with respect to sweet spot so the hinge will also apply force in the same direction as your force okay that is if you are applying force towards left hinge force will also be towards left so this explains why hitting the ball from the sweet spot is very important see for example a ball is coming towards you you are hitting the ball with your bat okay now if you apply a lot of force on the bat if you swing the bat very hard and when the ball impacts on the bat your hand which acting like a hinge will experience a lot of force okay your hand could experience a force in this direction or in this direction so if you want to avoid being hit by that force then you need to hit the ball on the sweet spot if the ball is hitting exactly on the sweet spot your hand will experience no force and without any worry of uh, damage to your hand you can swing the bat with full effort okay and you can also try for a six right so this is the concept behind sweet spot now let's understand how you can find direction of friction using sweet spot so we have a round object over here which is undergoing pure rolling that's the important point the object is undergoing pure rolling on the ground right and this is the center of mass okay which is exactly at the center of the body now let's say this radius is r and the bottom most point of the body will behave like a instantaneous hinge 
ओके द बॉटम मोस्ट पॉइंट ऑफ द रोलिंग ऑब्जेक्ट बिहेव लाइक एक्सेस ऑफ रोटेशन इट बिहेव लाइक अंज अबाउट विच द बॉडी सीम्स टू रोटेट ओके सो वेन फ्रिक्शन इज बींग एक्टिंग ओवर हियर इट इज बेसिकली सिमिलर टू हिंज फोर्स ओके सो दिस इज बिहेविंग लाइक हिंज वी कैन से राइट बिहेविंग लाइक हिंज सो फ्रिक्शन फोर्स इज सिमिलर टू हिंज फोर्स सो वी कैन अप्लाई द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ स्वीट स्पॉट ओवर हियर नाउ इफ यू डोंट वॉन्ट एनी फ्रिक्शन देन वॉट शुड बी द हाइट ऑफ द पॉइंट फ्रॉम वेयर यू शुड अप्लाई द फोर्स for no friction for no friction while rolling h into r should be equal to kc square simple let's take a simple example of disk okay in case of a disk kc square is equal to r square by 2 correct so if kc square is r square by 2 then h will be how much h will be equal to r by 2 that is if you apply a force r by 2 distance from the center of mass there will be no friction on the disc from the ground now what if the force is not acting on the sweet spot so if the force is acting slightly above okay slightly above this point that is if the force is acting in this region in this case friction as uh, applied forces away from the sweet spot away from the hinge that is h is more than kc square by r sorry h is more than kc square by r so in this case friction will act in the same direction as the applied force so if your applied force is towards right your friction will also be acting towards right and opposite of that opposite of that will be if the uh, applied force is below the sweet spot that is in this region okay so h is less than kc square by r so in that case friction will act opposite to the applied force that is a force is towards right friction from the ground will be towards left okay now how to find the instantaneous axis of rotation that is the point about which the rod appears to be rotating at any given moment so for example if i am applying the force over here let's say at a distance of x1 from the center of mass okay and this rod is not hinged anywhere the rod is free to move in this space so in that case at this instant okay whether you are applying a force okay or just an impulse like you are flicking a pen like this okay so in either case at the given in instant the rod will appear to rotate about a point which is x2 distance away from the center of mass such that x1 times x2 will be equal to kc square so using the same formula for sweet spot you can find the instantaneous axis of rotation and this also explains why when force is applied at the sweet spot in case of a hinged rod the hinge will not apply any force because for example let's take the original case let's say that x1 is equal to l by 6 then we have already learned that in case of a rod x2 will be equal to l by 2 okay l by 6 and l by 2 together create a pair right so in that case my hinge will be over here at the top my iar will be at the top okay so in case of a free rod if you are applying the force over here this point is not moving at the given moment and therefore if this point was an actual hinge it is not trying to move about the hinge and therefore the hinge does not need to apply any force okay now comes the important part what if i am hanging this object about this point in that case my sweet spot is lying over here such that x1 times x2 equal to kc square we already know now what if i reverse the hinge that is initially this point was the hinge and this was the sweet spot now what if i hinge the rod about the sweet spot okay that is if distance from center of the sweet spot is x2 then now the hinge distance from the center of mass is x2 so in that case this point will now become your sweet spot okay here you have got your sweet spot 
okay this is your sweet spot and this is also your sweet spot over here okay also one more point whether the rod is hanging about this point or about this point in both the cases the time period for small oscillations will be same okay in both cases in both cases time period is same for small oscillations of the rod okay